Hello, Milkweed Nation. Welcome to Grow Milkweed Plants podcast. Today is the third in a series of three episodes that take you from place to place experiencing new milkweed plants. So this is episode number 44, and on today's episode, we are traveling to the American state of Hawaii, hence the introduction. So the reason we're going to Hawaii is because the amazing flora and fauna, and also because my wife really enjoys it. She actually hasn't been there too many times. So we made the trip down there. This trip actually started in the planning phase well before October of 2019. It actually started in September of 2018. And so to take you there, we're going to travel back in time to my wife's birthday in 2018. And she was encouraged to dream, to dream about what she would like to do in the future. And one thing that she dreamt up in the weeks after her birthday was traveling to the Garden Island of Hawaii. She wanted to go see Lahui. And I'm a sucker for Lahui because it is the Garden Isle. It is one of the greenest islands in the Hawaiian chain, which is probably how it got its nickname, Garden Isle. So she had said to me, boy, it would be wonderful if we could, if we could travel to Lahui, like how much do flights cost to Lahui? Cause I'm always, I'm always asking how much is this going to cost me whenever a trip comes up and the airfare, it's not completely unreasonable. So the main concern was lodging. Where are we going to stay when we go to Lahui? A few weeks after that, the idea was already in her head. She already shared it with me and she said, uh, Hey, this teacher, uh, the principal actually at a, at a nearby school, she's a teacher, my wife is, and the principal said, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you, if you want this, the first person to come to my office can get these tickets to Oktoberfest put on by the uh, Reno, uh, Reno Rotary Club. And so the Reno Rotary Club has an Oktoberfest each October, and we went to this event with free tickets, which was great. I think it's a $50 entry otherwise, but we were gifted entry. So we went to the Oktoberfest. They had some great food, live music. There were some beer vendors there. A great time was being had by all. But the reason I bring this up is there was a silent auction, which is basically a fundraiser for the Reno Rotary Club. So at the silent auction, of course, we, we take a look at some of the items that are there and there's, you know, a cooler full of, you know, goodies and there's, uh, you know, flower vases and wine packages and things like that. And these things were all great, but nothing quite got our attention. Like the gentleman who was putting up his timeshare and making the, the week in his timeshare available to, um, the winning bidder. And of course, what was the location of the timeshare? Lahui, Kauai, Princeville specifically. So my wife comes over and says, Hey, let's bid on this. And I said, all right, well, what's our budget, you know? And, uh, the thing's marked with a $1,400 value. We, we got it for a couple hundred dollars less, a few hundred dollars less. And we ended up winning the auction. So that is October, 2018. Fast forward to October of 2019. And we're hopping on a jet to Hawaii. Now, what, what what does this have to do with milkweed, you might ask? Well, let's let's tie this into milkweed. So for the last, I don't know, five years, I've been podcasting about milkweed plants. And when I say milkweed plants, I'm not talking about a specific plant. I'm talking about a family of plants. And much like your family, we're spread out all over the country. I've got brother in California, sister and parents in Idaho. My grandma was in Cal California. Now she's in Idaho. I've got another uh, grandfather in Massachusetts. I mean, the same thing is happening with the plants. So milkweed plant family, Asclepius. There's a ton of them down in uh, South Africa, for instance. One milkweed in particular, 
uh, Cancellata. It's actually, uh, it's actually been reclassified out of the Asclepius family, but for the purposes of it being a host plant for the monarch, uh, we can still call it Asclepius Cancellata. Cape milkweed, also called wild cotton, grows in South Africa. It's also present in Southern Australia. And there's not a lot of populations of this plant. There's basically those two places is where you're going to find it. That's because plants aren't terribly mobile. Milkweed's probably one of the more mobile plants that there is because the coma inside of the seed pod can be dispersed very easily through the wind. So I don't know how it got from South Africa to South Australia. It is at the same longitude, about 33.9, actually uh, negative 33.9. It's in the Southern Hemisphere. Other milkweeds, let's just look at North American milkweeds, uh, counting Mexico, United States, and Canada. There's 70 different milkweeds inside the milkweed family. So if the family is milkweed, then the individuals would be showy milkweed, common milkweed, butterfly weed, horsetail milkweed, you know, all these milkweeds that I've talked about and many more that I haven't even brought up in this podcast yet. So the point here is, even within the family in North America, you have common milkweed, which resides throughout all of the eastern United States. And then you have showy milkweed, which is like kind of like a doppelganger that resides all on the western United States. And very seldom do the two cross. Now, what I'm trying to get you to think about is that these are all of the native ranges of the plants. Now, it's kind of ironic that I'm talking about, oh, the native range of the plant, because when I travel to Hawaii, I'm going to be talking about milkweed down there. And it's actually not a native species. Hawaii has no native milkweed. That being said, Hawaii has no native pineapples. Hawaii has no native coffee. But uh, pineapple and coffee are grown there and does really well there. So we're going to check out primarily two species of milkweed. And I'm using the term milkweed loosely because uh, milkweed is generally defined as Asclepius. However, when I use the term milkweed, I'm primarily talking about host plants for uh, the Danis butterfly, which includes monarch, queen, soldier, African tiger, any caterpillar that consumes a milkweed-like plant. So the milkweed in Hawaii is called Calotropis procera, which is giant milkweed, and Calotropis gigantea, crown flower. These two milkweed plants can do very well in Hawaii. Interestingly, they don't do well in all of Hawaii. Um, for the most part, there's two reasons. And the reason for Calotropis procera is a different reason than it is for Calotropis gigantea. So Calotropis procera likes uh, dry, sandy soils. It likes not having a lot of competition. And on the island, there is one specific part of this island where the plant does very well. And that happens to be on the westernmost part of the island, which is the windward side where the wind comes in. Right there on about a five mile stretch of beach where you're gonna see a fairly heavy, you could almost call it like a invasion. You're gonna see a fairly heavy invasion of Calotropis procera. And I'm calling it an invasion because Calotropis procera is not native to the Hawaiian Islands. So the Calotropis procera is doing well there because it spreads by seed and the seeds go into the wind and when they land, they land on the beach, they land on the, uh, in the soil there. And in the conditions are just right. There's very little competition. Um, it's very like salty breeze and things like that, but there's very little competition from other plants. There's just grasses growing in the area. 
but they've actually taken hold quite nicely in uh, Kikaha Beach State Park. I think it's State Park. Anyway, Kikaha Beach State Beach. Kikaha is um, it's just got a ton of these Calotropus procera, and it looks like they've been there for decades and decades. If um, I were to guess, I would say that a couple of plants were planted by the parking lot area, and those plants have led to the other plants growing in the area because I think uh, wind dispersion has taken the seed pods and blown the seeds far and wide. However, uh, the seeds have the potential to travel all over the island because uh, they has got that coma attached to it. However, I don't think that, uh, based on my observations, I don't think that the, the conditions, the habitat on all of the island is conducive to Calotropus procera propagating. So for that reason, it's really isolated to this rather small area, about a five mile stretch, no more than you know a couple hundred yards in from the shore. Now the second species, Calotropus gigantea, is uh, spread throughout the island in a very different way. So Calotropus gigantea seems to very, very seldom, if ever, produce fruit that in turn produces seeds. So this particular plant, Calotropus gigantea, it comes in two different color variations on the bloom, and both of these can be observed in Lahui, on Lahui. The first color is kind of the normal color that you would expect. It's a, it's a deep purple. And the second is a white flower, uh, commonly referred to as alba, A-L-B-A. Alba, white, kind of like albino. And the Caltropus gigantea alba is a really pretty flower. All of these are. Now the Caltropus gigantea doesn't spread by seeds. So how does this plant get established on the island? there's really only one way, and that is propagating it yourself and planting it. So there is a nursery that you can go to that has literally thousands of different species of plant. Many of them are native to the islands. They have a special section set aside for native plants. I'm gonna leave a little gap right here. I'm gonna drop in the name of the nursery now. Kauai Seascapes Nursery. Upon arrival to Kauai Seascapes Nursery, you'll be immediately drawn into their lush and meticulously cared for grounds that rival a botanic garden. The nursery is set on a five acre lot in the beautiful area of the North Shore of Kauai within the majestic Namahana mountain range as your backdrop. And now that you have the name of that nursery, I'm gonna recommend you go there and ask them for Calotropus gigantea because they had one plant there that was incredible. It was uh, an alba bloom color, had a white bloom, and it, it was covered in caterpillars. Uh, it had caterpillar chew marks, it had little baby caterpillars, and I didn't see any monarchs flying around, but they're obviously in the area, primarily because of that plant. So where else did I see this plant? I'll tell you the, the hot spot. The absolute hot spot for this plant was right across from the Costco gas station. Um, I was taking the car back on the very last day leaving the islands, and I had seen, thanks to iNaturalist, I had seen a couple observations, and I decided I was going to go check out this area. And when I got to the Costco gas station to fill up the rental car with fuel before leaving the island, I looked and I could see from the Costco gas station, I could see the plants in the distance. So after a couple of U-turns later, these plants are located on the very edge of a golf course. However, access is not really restricted and you're not really interfering with golf course activity by parking at the adjacent senior center. So I parked in a quiet part of that parking lot, pulled out my phone and Right there was five monarchs fluttering about right over the uh, Calotropus gigantea. 
there was actually Calotropis gigantea alba. There was Calotropis gigantea traditional, so per- white and purple blooms. And there was also, to a much lesser degree, there were a couple of Calotropis procera plants. So giant milkweed and crown flower and crown flower with the white bloom. And there was over 25 plants right there. And if this was common milkweed, 25 plants would be you know, a medium-sized garden, I guess you would say. But I haven't really expressed the magnitude of how large these Calotropis species can get, especially when they're growing in a tropical location like Kauai. Now, going back to Kikaha Beach, I visited there two or maybe even three times. The first time I visited, I forgot to take a photo of myself with the plant. So I was like, okay, we got to go back. I got to get a photograph of me like in front of the plant so that I can see, you know, the size, the scale, the magnitude of these plants. And on that second visit, it was starting to sprinkle. So I could actually take shelter underneath the Calotropis procera plants because they have such a big leaf like bigger than two, two hands together. They're enormous. That's just the leaf. Then you look at the seed pod and the seed pod is bigger than your fist. It's like two fists together in any orientation. They're just massive in all, all dimensions. And then, and then the, the stem, like what you would normally look at on a plant and call it a stem on Calotropis procera, I would call it a trunk. It's basically a tree trunk. These things are growing. I estimated one of them to be 25 feet tall. I didn't have any real way to measure the plant, but with me standing in front of it, multiplying my height out, it was easily like over 25, 20 feet tall. 20, I was guessing about 23 feet would be my best guess. And the trunk had a diameter so big that you could put you could put your hands around the trunk and you would not even be barely more than halfway around the diameter of the trunk of this Calotropis procera. Massive. Now these are the biggest ones. These are the biggest example of this type of plant that I've ever seen. Now on the Calotropis gigantea, on the crown flower, those plants, they have a little bit of a different way that they branch out, but they get equally massive, if not more so, because uh, the sheer volume. So if uh, Calotropis procera grows a bit of a trunk, the Calotropis gigantea grows many, many branching stems. And so the root mass is probably equal in size, if not larger, on Calotropis gigantea. But the sheer number of stems that it sends out, they're like, they're like wands. It's like when the fireworks explode and it sends out all those individual, you know, flaming pieces or whatever. That's what it looks like. It looks like a big firework goes off around the, around the root mass and it sends out tons of different shoots and it creates a canopy that goes from ground level on one side to a peak well over 15 feet tall to ground level on the other side. And the entire thing is covered in green leaves, purple flowers, and monarch caterpillars. And so the Calotropis gigantea is a spectacle unto itself, and it is thriving in this particular location. Now, it's not spreading across the island. It's it's very uh, uninvasive. It's, it doesn't invade because those flowers seldom, if ever, are pollinated. And even if they are pollinated, they're not successfully creating fruit, which is, to me, seems very, very unusual. Why aren't these flowers, which are being visited for their nectar, how come they're not being pollinated? And this is a question I do not have the answer for. I've actually heard of many individuals trying to hand pollinate this flower. Humans are also unsuccessful. The question would be, 
if Calotropis gigantea in its native range, for instance, Bangalore, India, is the plant being successfully pollinated in India. And what we know about the plant is that it sometimes is. And the primary pollinator is probably a bat species, not an insect at all. The nectar on Calotropis gigantea is produced in higher amounts in the dawn and dusk hours, which happens to coincide with the flight patterns of bats who are feeding. They primarily feed from dusk to dawn. So you got to protect those bats. And I don't know if there are any on Hawaii to pollinate Calotropis gigantea. All right, I'm going to be taking a break on recording temporarily because there is a severe weather system moving into the Great Basin across California. It's going to be dropping in here to uh, the Reno Sparks community. And right now I can already see really high winds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to resume this episode later tonight or tomorrow. Uh, I foolishly picked up an extra shift on my day off. So I only had a one day weekend. And on my way to work today, I'm gonna leave early. I'm gonna drop off three orders of milkweed seeds from growmilkweedplants.com. I'm gonna take a red box back and pick up a prescription. But uh, I I didn't have time to finish today. So you guys take it easy. For you, it's going to be just a blink of an eye, and I'll be back tomorrow. When I resume, I'm going to be telling you five specific locations that you can go on the island of Kauai in Hawaii to go see Calotropis, either Procera or Gigantia, of course both. I'm going to tell you some alternatives to growing milkweed in Hawaii so that you're a good neighbor and a good host for the native butterfly of which there are two species of native butterflies to Kauai. So I'll tell you what those butterflies are and what their host plants are. And then I'm going to wrap it up by telling you a little bit of the tale of free milkweed seeds. So growmilkweedplants.com did a push for free milkweed seeds. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that brief intermission. Well, uh, I was off the mic. I squeezed in two work days, a snowstorm that started immediately after I pressed pause. That turned into a flash freeze, which turned a workspace into a skating rink. But uh, we're back now and the weather's not terrible. I promised we were going to talk about the top five places to see Calotropis in Kauai. And let's start at number five, Kauai Seascapes Nursery. Kauai Seascapes Nursery is located on the road to Princeville. Now, I'm assuming that you're leaving out of Lahui, which is the uh, major international airport in Kauai. On the road to Princeville, uh, right before you arrive in Princeville, it's going to be on your left-hand side. You can look up the address, kauaiseascapesnursery.com to find out exactly where they are. They're open Monday through Friday, 8 to 4, and Saturday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. The reason you might want to go there is to pick up a plant and bring it home. If you happen to live on the island, you can purchase Calotropis at their nursery. In addition to the plant that they have for sale, and I'm assuming that they're going to grow more because the one I saw is probably already sold, you can actually see a uh, specimen plant that they have growing there. So to find that plant, I'll give you a little bit of directions. You're gonna go to the very back of their property. Now keep in mind, they have approximately five acres if I'm not mistaken. And you're gonna wanna enjoy the walk back there because their facility is 
set up as a nursery, but the more you get to the outer edges of their property, the more it turns into a botanic garden. And you're going to see all kinds of tropical species of tree, palm tree, all sorts of things. You're going to see birds flying around, you may even catch a few butterflies. And now if you head to the very back of their property, and then uh, that's going to be towards the east, and then you go to the northeast corner and look to the north, that's where you're going to find the Calotropus plant. When I was there in 2019, the plant was approximately uh, between six and eight feet tall, so it's going to be a little bigger than that most likely. And uh, it's just one individual plant. It was not flowering, so it's difficult to say the species. I think it was Calotropus procera, if I had to guess. But if you go there and uh, see it in bloom, send me a photo. I'd love to uh, to know exactly which kind of plant that was. All right, so that's number five. Now the number four plant to go see is going to be located in... Kapa'a, and that is on the east side of the island. And this is a backyard plant. It's on somebody's property. You're not going to be able to um, access the plant completely. But while I was lost looking for a waterfall, uh, I saw this plant, flipped a U-turn. Uh, all the passengers in the car were super excited about waiting while I jumped out. And this is on... Uh, I can't pronounce these names, Kawahu, Kawahu Road between Kua and Wali. I don't know, K-U-A-U Road and W-I-L-I Road. And this is in a backyard. But uh, right on the side of the road, you can stop and uh, step out and look at the plant. You'll be standing basically in a in a ditch. So when it rains, your feet might get wet. Wonderful plant. This is Calotropis uh, procera, and it's probably uh, between 10 and 15 feet tall, multi-branching. When I was there in October, there was uh, blooms on it, and there was also giant uh, seed pods, giant fruit hanging off of it. And the neighborhood here is kind of a, uh, a volcanic slope, so kind of the way you would imagine, uh, not the not the peak of the volcano by any means. So this is the, the neighborhood that's built on the side where there was volcanic activity probably thousands of years ago in this location. And uh, it's mostly broken down volcanic uh, material that is pretty nice soil actually, like kind of like red dirt. A very short drive away from the neighborhood in Kapa is the brings us to number three on the list and this is at kapa'a's first hawaiian church and at the first hawaiian church in kapa'a it is uh, located right near the downtown area along kuhio highway and if you stop and grab a bite to eat or a smoothie or go shopping at one of the stores for art pick up a t-shirt souvenir go to the ABC store, you are right next to Kapa'a's First Hawaiian Church. And in their, uh, in their backyard is an enormous uh, Calotropis gigantea. Now, when I shared photos of this plant on Instagram, there was a lot of feedback from people who have been to Kapa'a and seen this plant. So it is like uh, kind of like an iconic plant in the, uh, on this island. And you can go there and check it out. Now, occasionally, depending on the season, the, the landowners at the church, they will hack this plant back. And uh, you can't fault them for doing that because this thing was enormous when I saw it. It was growing outside the boundaries of the fence that it was planted adjacent to. So it was, it was in the, like the lawn area of the church, but it was also growing like six feet beyond the fence line into like uh, where people might park along the fence just off the road. And the, the plant was uh, as tall as it was wide. And there was flowers all over this plant. 
Anyways, amazing. So Kapa'a's first church right there in Kapa'a along the Kuhio Highway. That's number three as far as places to see Calatropus on the island of Hawaii. So the number four place to go to see Calatropus is about a mile or two to the west of the Lahui Kauai Airport. And it is on, uh, it's on golf course property. Now let's see if I can get this golf course name. Pauakia. Let me see if I got that right. That's not showing up on the map here. I think it's Pauakia Golf Course. And where I parked was Regency at Pauakia Retirement and Assisted Living parking lot right on Nuhuo Street. And that's right between the Costco gasoline and the uh, retirement and assisted living facility. And then there's uh, some apartments on the other side. So this is where like the golf course path that the carts take makes a turn. It does like a, a hairpin turn and then they come back around to the green. Now in that little nook behind where they're doing the U-turn, right between Nahuo Street and the green, that is where there is approximately 25 Calatropus plants, enormous plants. They're doing really, really well. And it's, uh, if you're, if you're flying in and out of Lahui, Kauai, you should, uh, you know, you should get the cheapest gas on the island, which is at Costco there. And you should check out these plants. The, the main reason would be for the butterfly activity. This was where I saw the most monarchs in flight uh, while visiting the island. So uh, that is right in the town of Lahui, and it's uh, very easily accessible. The number one place to go to see Calatropus on uh, Kauai is Kikaha Beach Park. Kikaha Beach Park is on the west side of the island, and uh, if you set out from uh, Lahui, you're going to drive uh, past Poipu, which is a popular beach where you can snorkel and uh, enjoy the wildlife there. There's some very rambunctious chickens running around. You're going to continue on uh, past uh, Hanapipi Beach Park, Hanapepe. You can get some shave ice there. It's delicious. The next uh, way, waypoint is uh, Waimea. And actually in the town of Waimea, I'm going to skip recommending these plants. However, there are some uh, plants. Actually, there's more shave ice here. There's shave ice all over. You got to get the shave ice. Uh, I think it's in Waimea. You, you can stop at, uh, it's actually right behind l l Hawaiian Barbecue and not far from JoJo's Shave Ice. And there are Calatropus gigantia there, Alba. And those are manicured in somebody's side yard. But Kikaha Beach Park is the number one place to go. And this is where there's the biggest, most mature, uh, beautiful Calatropus procera plants that you're ever going to see. These plants are literally so enormous that you could uh, climb them. I'm not going to lie, I I kind of climbed them just a little bit, just right on the trunk. And for a, for a plant that hosts the monarch to be that big, it is like, it's like life-changing to see that plant. And uh, you will not see a plant like that growing up in Minnesota or, you know, Massachusetts, Canada. These Calatropus plants, they like... The warm weather, they they like the uh, the breeze off the ocean. They like the sandy soil. These things have put down some massive roots into the sand, and they're also colonizing the area. Uh, people might say that this plant is an invasive and it's uh, taking over the area, and to some degree it is. However, I would argue that. We're looking at a stretch of road um, along Kikaha, the town, that has a, a coastal shoreline. And 
it's oh gosh i said earlier i thought it was maybe five miles i think it's like a mile and a half or two miles of roadway and this area has a lot of exposed beach sand you know the silicic sandy white sand however outside of this area those conditions don't exist i mean there's there's sandy beaches all over this island but it but this plant is not colonizing the whole island it's not taking over Kauai. it is showing up in people's yards it's hard to say if they've planted it or they just chose not to pull it up so it is blowing the seeds are forming on these plants i saw a um probably a either an Asian honeybee or an American uh, honeybee on the bloom. And this was one of the first bees that I've actually seen on the island. I don't think it was actually pollinating. There's probably something else that's doing the pollination. The, they are getting pollinated. This is Calotropus brocera. They are getting pollinated and the seeds are blowing all over the beach out there. So to some degree, yes, it's definitely uh, thriving there. But this particular condition with the sand and the sun and, and the soil, the way that it is, it seems to be fairly isolated to this area, at least for now. So Kikaha Beach Park is going to be the number one destination I recommend that you go to to check out the uh, Calotropus plants on Kauai. Before I move on to Hawaii's two native butterflies, I wanted to answer the question, uh, when did monarchs arrive in Hawaii? And the answer to that is that the Calotropus gigantea plant was introduced to Hawaii in the mid-1800s, and the monarch arrived shortly after that. Now, this website called uh, explorebiodiversity.com, it has some information about the white morph. And in the 1960s, a white morph of the monarch butterfly was detected on the island of Oahu. It is called the Niviosis morph and has been the only population of white morphs until a second population was detected in Vanuatu around the year 2000. Now, we also know that in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, there is other white morphs that are being studied in the laboratory there. Now, the white morph in Hawaii had a population of 1% relative to the total population in the 1960s. And the population grew in 1984 to 4%, and it peaked in 1988 as 8% of the population. However, by 1996, the population of white morph had decreased to 1.7% of the population. They don't know exactly why the change occurred, they think that there was a bird that was uh, particular about eating the orange butterflies or that it was easier to see the orange butterflies, the traditional orange morph of the butterfly on the Calotropus plants, which made the white morph uh, relatively higher in population. And then they think that the same bird that was responsible for eating the orange adults switched its diet to the caterpillars. And when it began to eat more of the caterpillars, the distinction between orange and white was not apparent on the caterpillars. And so more of the white ones got eaten at that point. And that brought the population of white morphs down to 1.7% as of the year 2000. So that's a very, very interesting so if you want to see the white morphs, I guess you go to the island of Oahu, hang out next to the Calotropus plants, and you have a one in a hundred shot. If you see a hundred monarchs, just about one, one to two of them are going to be white. That's very special. Um, very interesting. Very, very interesting. So Hawaii has two native butterflies. Hawaiians should get to know what they are. They should love them because... They have been there longer than the Hawaiians themselves, perhaps. And Hawaiians should grow their host plants. I would like to say that if you're growing a Calotropus plant in Hawaii, um, that does not mean that you are not growing native plants. I don't think when you make a choice to grow one plant that you're making a choice not to grow something else. 
I'd like to think you could plant two plants in close proximity and have the best of both worlds. So the two native butterflies on the islands of Hawaii are the Udara blackburnii, which can go by the names Koa butterfly, Hawaiian blue, or blackburns butterfly. The host plant for Udara blackburnii includes, but is not limited to, Dodonea viscosa, broadleaf hop bush, and Acacia coeia, which is uh, coeia. And the second butterfly is Vanessa tameamea. It goes by the name Kamehameha butterfly and the Hawaiian name of Palui Luhua. Now, keep in mind, I don't speak Hawaiian, so. Uh, don't quote me on that. Host plants include, but are not limited to, the Pipturus albidus, uh, which goes by the name Memakea. And so I did see a couple of these native host plants at the Kauai Seascapes Nursery. Kauai Seascapes Nursery is the same place that was uh, number one on the list of places to go. I'm sorry, number five on the list of places to go for Calotropus. And they have a section of their nursery dedicated to native Hawaiian plants. And it's in that section of their nursery that you're going to see uh, some of these. I think it was the Dodonea viscosa, which was the host plant for um, the Hawaiian blue. So the Hawaiian blue butterfly, it's a deceptively attractive butterfly. It has this like iridescent green when its wings are closed. However, when it opens its wings, that's when you see the blue color. The uh, Kamehameha butterfly, I kind of uh, think of that as kind of like a painted lady, American painted lady. You see in the name uh, Vanessa Temeamea. And so, uh, the Vanessa butterfly is common in the United States on, on the mainland. And, uh, the Vanessa is included in the name of the, uh, painted lady as well. The painted lady is Vanessa Cardui. Changing gears here back to the mainland United States on October 1st, 2019, I finally fulfilled a dream of mine, which is to give away free milkweed seeds. And I started doing that at growmilkweedplants.com slash free seeds on October 1st of 2019. And I'm still doing that today. However, the program runs basically on donations. There's a number of ways to fund free milkweed seeds direct donations, and also the sale of seeds that funds free seeds for others. So on October 1st, in order to kickstart this program, I began with a $500 match. And I did a Facebook fund fundraiser. And I sincerely want to thank the 22 people that made the fundraiser a success raising $475 and I did the uh I did a $500 match on that. So, thank you. I'm going to tell you exactly who I'm thanking. I want to thank Wayne, Teresa, Jules, Sandy, Jennifer, Heather, Donald, Crystal, Eric, Larissa, Jeff, Charlene, Carmen, Lori, Kathy, Dorothy, Demi, Krissa, Denise, Janie, and Linda. Thank you very much. Without your donations, financial donations, the launch of free milkweed seeds uh, would have fallen short. So my goal for the free milkweed seed program was to deliver 250 gram packets of milkweed seeds to 250 people by Christmas Day. I began the program on October 1st, and uh, free milkweed seeds has been a goal of mine for many years. Now, the request started coming in uh, right after I launched the program, and then on October 5th to the 12th, 
we went to uh, Hawaii. And so while I was out there in Hawaii checking out the calotropis plants, these uh, orders for free milkweed seeds were coming in. And I knew I was going to be busy when I got back to the mainland. And I definitely was. In fact, I was super busy for the entire month of October, November, and December, shipping out up to 75 packets of free milkweed seeds every day. Not, I wasn't shipping 75 packets every day, but on some of the days when lots of orders were coming in, I was shipping that many packets. And so uh, the program was awesome. I shipped, uh, I've got some statistics here. I shipped 290 grams of free milkweed seeds to 272 people. That's over 10 ounces of seeds, more than half a pound of free milkweed seeds. The seeds were sent to 46 out of 50 states. I even sent free milkweed seeds to a man in Canada thanks to the support of a member in the Grow Milkweed Plants Facebook group who helped by sponsoring the additional cost of shipping to Canada. The seeds came from uh, many different uh, species and places. There were 52 packets of common milkweed from New York, 119 packets of tropical milkweed from California, 22 packets of showy milkweed from Idaho, and a special thank you to Yes Yes Nursery for providing those Idaho milkweed seeds. 10 packets of common milkweed from Maine, 37 packets of swamp milkweed from Missouri, 46 packets of common milkweed, that's not common milkweed, 46 packets of uh, showy milkweed from Nevada, that's my own backyard, and four packets of uh, Harry Balls seeds from California. Thank you everyone for your support, both in providing some of these seeds. Some of these seeds I also purchased and uh, all of them were given away for free. It cost me about $4 to ship each packet and it was about $720 in shipping, some shipping materials. And of course my time was freely given for this adventure because uh, I just wanted to be generous going into Christmas. So I hope these seeds are growing in the, uh, in the new year in 2020, because, uh, we know the monarchs need these, uh, these plants. I got a lot of positive feedback. So four weeks after the seed ship, there is a, um, request for a product review and the free seed program is 4.9 out of five stars. Now, of course, uh, somebody didn't have a great experience because um, they're disappointed because they can't grow them yet. It's still a little bit too cold. So I completely understand when you leave a four-star review because uh, you're, not, you're not actually growing them yet. If you would like to learn more about the free seeds program, you can go to growmilkweedplants.com slash free seeds. Consider purchasing a packet that funds a packet of free milkweed seeds for others or make a direct donation through the PayPal link provided on that webpage. Now, if you're listening to this podcast on a mobile device, go ahead and look at your screen right now. If you type in uh, the code up, down, left, right, left, right, BA, BA, select, start, it's not going to do anything special for you. So just go ahead and uh, swipe up on the screen and tap the uh, five-star review. And uh, that'll make my day a whole lot better and go a long way in supporting the show. And if you support this show, that's probably going to help in some small way in supporting the butterflies. And always remember, if it's good for the butterflies, it's good for me. Thank you for listening to Grow Milkweed Plants Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Grimm. They say Latin is a dead language, but I think my niece is studying Latin in elementary school in Los Angeles. Maybe she'll be a botanist when she grows up.